It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling and his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross. Feeling forsaken by his father. Left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laughing. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. And it is Sunday morning. It's Easter Sunday morning, Pleasant Hill, and we're so glad that we're worshiping together this morning. It doesn't matter if we are here in this room, if we're over at the worship center in the gym, or if we're sitting in our homes as we all are this morning, it is Easter Sunday morning and Jesus is, hallelujah, alive. I'd like for you to just to sit back and worship this morning, feel free in your living room to stand up and, and praise God because Sunday is here, Easter Sunday is here, and we will worship God together. Hallelujah 
louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Church, it's so good to be with you this morning. 
uh, especially here on Easter Sunday. And uh, it's a little emotional for me because it's been a long time since I've been able to get up here and do what I love to do. And uh, so I want you guys to know that I miss you so bad. Um, I wish that I could be with each and every one of you worshiping this morning in person. But since I'm not, I hope that you're enjoying worship with me as much as I'm enjoying it with you in your homes. And uh, I think now more than ever, it's so important for us to realize what the church is or who the church is. And that's you. That's me. That's Dee Dee. That's this band. Because trust me, for the time that I wasn't able to be here because of work, some 177 days, according to Tim Darby, uh, but who's keeping tabs? Uh, <laughs> uh, for the times that I wasn't able to be here, this group was still my church. And so I want to speak hope to you this morning because I know that some of you may be going through some things and you may feel like you're at the bottom and, and there's no further down that you can go and so during my time away the only worship that I could get aside from the worship with the praise band here was to and from work because I was working so much and then I, in the middle of worship and I just want to speak this into you today on Easter Sunday especially you know I, I felt like I was at that bottom because I missed my church family so bad DD and and I, I think I shared this with DD or, or somebody that God gave me this vision of a teddy bear and it lay there on the floor, can't get any lower and it's just like God reached down and picked that teddy bear up and he, he picked it up so swiftly that the head leans back and the arms lean back and the, the legs lean back and, and, and you're in God's hands. And in that moment of worship, in my truck, tears going down my face, hand in the air, people probably thinking I'm not even holding on the steering wheel. I knew that it was getting close to time for me to come back. I knew that God was preparing me in my heart to come back and, and to worship with you guys. So I want you to know that I love you. I miss you dearly. I've missed you. And I'm so happy to be back this morning and uh, worshiping with you guys. So thank you for being the church while I wasn't able to be here with you guys. Down from glory to where. 
that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no Father God, we come to you on this Resurrection Sunday, Lord, and we thank you so much that your son loved us enough to get up out of that grave. Father, today we receive and declare the power in the name of Jesus Christ over cancer, over depression, over health issues, over COVID-19, anything lord there is power in the name of jesus christ and we just receive that this morning hallelujah father god we love you so much father thank you for putting your great plan into commission for us the gentile father thank you so much we love you so much and we just want to continue to worship you this morning we love you and praise you in jesus name amen
Good morning once again, church. Um, it's so good to be together, even if, if we're together virtually here on this Sunday morning. Let's remember that we are the church. Buildings aren't the church, and we will be back together here soon. We just don't know exactly when, but it is Easter Sunday morning, and we are just so, we are so um, excited that we are celebrating that Jesus is alive. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this day the power and presence of your Holy Spirit in our lives. And I just pray now that, God, you would bless us in that the words that I speak and the the meditation and condition of all of our hearts be acceptable to to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm reading from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. This is Luke's gospel account of Resurrection Sunday morning. But early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb. 
taking the spices that they had prepared, they found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking among the the dead for someone who is alive. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to take a look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings, and he went home again, wondering what had happened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I stopped there because I think one of the things that I'm realizing and that I'm seeing in my life and I am seeing in the life of the church in general is that sometimes it appears as if we have just looked into the tomb and seen the linens. And there is way much more than just looking into the tomb and seeing the linens. We are offered an opportunity to touch Jesus, to be with him, to let him come into our lives in a way that is just incredible. So keeping that in mind, I want to tell you about when I was in seminary, I, uh, it was a seminary where there were a lot of faith traditions represented. There were, it was a Cumberland Presbyterian seminary, um, and uh, there, were, there were quite a few United Methodists there as well. Um, there were some Baptists there, but there was, there was a denomination that was represented very well, the Church of God in Christ. Now, if you're not familiar with the Church of God in Christ, they call themselves, a lot of them do, they abbreviate it, they call themselves Kojic. And there are some Church of God in Christ in, in, in Alabama, but primarily it, it's, a, it's an African-American denomination that stretches from Memphis up to Kansas City, Missouri. It's where the majority of, of people of that faith tradition are. And I got to be friends with some of these folks. And one day, a friend of mine and I from a, that was a Cumberland Presbyterian um, we sat down with another friend of ours who was Church of God in Christ. And we were just talking about differences between our tradition, traditions, you know, Methodist, Presbyterian, and, and Church of God in Christ. And we got to the subject of Lent and Easter and some of the things that we do, some of the things that we celebrate. And he said, do y'all have a specific greeting um, on, on Easter Sunday morning? And both of us said, absolutely. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Is, and we talked about that for a minute. He said, well, we, we have one too, but it's, it's, it's kind of the same, but a little different. And he said, what we do is we greet one another by saying, he got up, just like that. And we go around and we say it face to face with other people before the service starts. We'll say, he got up, and the other person will say, he got up. And the next thing you know, it's happening everywhere, and people are hugging and shaking hands, and they're celebrating the fact that Jesus got up. And then he said, we'll start worship. And the worship leader or the pastor will come to the front of the dais or the platform and say, he got up. And and, and the congregation will respond back, he got up. Just like that. And when ever since he, he told us that story, it has stuck with me in a way that has been very profound. And, and I think that all that happened, it's a matter of, it's a matter of, of, of semantics or, or, or linguistics for me. I had always said he is risen, he is risen indeed, and there's other ways to say it. And sometimes 
when you put your feet into another culture or another context and they say it differently, it, it becomes alive again in a way, in a more fresh way. And I think that's what's happened to me over the years is I get up on Sunday morning and what I'm wanting to say on Easter Sunday morning is I want to scream at the top of my lungs, he got up because he did. He got up. He got up so that we could be who it is that we are called to be. He got up out of that grave and he left all the sin and the death behind him because he had paid the debt. He got up so that the captives could be set free through us. He got up so that the blind could receive sight. He got up so that those who cannot hear can hear. He got up so that relationships can be restored. He got up so that addicts could be put in a place where they can receive healing and they can be set free. He got up because we aren't able to get up from death ourselves. He got up so that he can live in us. He got up because he is our righteousness. During this time, with all of these unprecedented things going on in our world, as we have spoken about in weeks previous, it is easy to get discouraged but I, I find what's happening right now is that most people are becoming more and more encouraged. As Christians, we know that because Jesus got up out of that grave, that there is an ultimate reason and hope that we are looking for. Jesus provides that hope because he got up. But I see, folks, I'm seeing people, I'm seeing, I'm seeing our culture wake up a little bit. As if, as if we have been in a nap. Interestingly and ironically enough, even though it seems as if we've been in a nap, so the position we are in right now, we are having to rest in order to wake up from the nap. And I think that it's happening. I think we're being awakened in culture to what's really important. I think our culture is being awakened to where our time really needs to be. I think that we're being awakened in so many ways, and some of which we won't even realize in, until a later time. But I believe that we are being awoken in many ways. And in the most important way that I believe we are being awakened is through Christ's body on earth. Now, note that I did not say in the church. I did not say in an institution or an organization. I believe that within all the denominations, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, Lutheran, Episcopalian, Assemblies of God, I believe that the body is waking up. I believe that many things are occurring where we are starting to look back at who it is that we are as followers of Jesus Christ. And at the base of it all, and before anything else, what we proclaim with astonishment as Christians is that he got up. Church, it's what everything is based upon in what we believe, that the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rose up from the grave. 
I got a sweet letter from a wonderful lady this past week, Miss Sheila Rhodes. Many of you know her. Wonderful, wonderful lady. In the first line of the letter, she said, you can't cancel Easter. And I know what she meant by it. And you know what she meant by it. It's impossible. It is impossible to cancel Easter. Why is it impossible to cancel Easter? Because no matter what quarantine is going on, no matter what virus has ravaged our world, no matter of wars and rumors of wars, his grave is still empty and he still is alive. Nothing, nothing, nothing will ever change that. Nothing will ever change that. He is alive here in Florence, Alabama. He is alive in New York City. He's alive in Chicago. He's alive in Detroit. He's alive in New Orleans. He's alive in Rome. He's alive in, in Florence, Italy. He's alive in Milan and Venice. He's alive in China. Nothing can change the fact that he is alive in Wuhan, China. Nothing can change the fact that he is uh, as alive in Las Vegas as he is in Jerusalem. Jesus Christ is alive. And why is he alive, church? Because he got up. He got up. He got up so that we could be set free. Before I close, I want to remind everyone of something. Everything that we believe, everything as Christians, hinges upon the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Everything that we believe hinges upon the fact that the body of Jesus rose from the grave. And I can tell you with confidence there's just more historical evidence for the resurrection than there is for just about anything else in history. Church, he got up. And he got up for you and for me. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Happy Easter, Pleasant Hill, and whoever else may be watching. And now I just pray that the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is out of the grave and risen forever and ever because he got up, goes with all of us in the rest of this day, this week, and the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.
just the settling. He rose That's up right from there. the day he <laughs> rose. Did I okay. say that? Oh, no, I did. I rose up from the day. I was going to say day. Yeah. Rose up from the drave. <laughs> That's a wrap. She's still recording. <laughs> 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 <laughs>